Okay, today's subject is fibromyalgia, and we have had great success with fibromyalgia. And it's kind of interesting to notice that the world should have made progress, the world of medicine. Uh, but I got a report yesterday from uh, ULAR. ULAR is the uh, European League Against Rheumatism, and 11 doctors 11, 11 countries sent their doctors, their top experts there, to form guidelines for fibromyalgia. And I thought, well, let's see what kind of progress they made. Well, uh, <laughs> it sounds like the same old stew that we have, uh, that we have had uh, going on before. They used a dis multidisciplinary approach and uh, the highest scientific criteria. One of the things that they did and to exclude any error from the studies was to exclude people that had chronic fatigue, which beats the hell out of me because chronic fatigue, in our view, is a step towards fibromyalgia. You can have chronic fatigue and not have fibromyalgia. You can have fibromyalgia and you have chronic fatigue. So, uh, and there's usually a virus associated with that. So they seem to disconnect on some of these things. Uh, of 146 studies that they reviewed, 39 were pharmacologic and 59 were non-pharmacologic. Uh, in these uh, studies, uh, they identified cat categories of treatment uh, with uh, antidepressants, analgesics, and other pharmacological, and non-pharmacological exercise, cognitive behavioral therapy, education, dietary interventions, interventions and non, other non-pharmacologic. Uh, dietary is as close as they come to saying nutrition and uh, the word supplements is never, never, ever used here. So this is the beginning of the explanation why they remain going around chasing their tails. Um, they came up with, uh, they, had, they had help from uh, financial aid, some of the interview authors have disclosed financial relationships. Marvelous, the fact that they're, that they're showing us that they got a little help from some drug companies here. And the drug companies named are Procter & Gamble, who used to make soap, uh, Sanofi Aventis, Roche, Bristol Myers, Squibb, Pierre Fabre, sounds like a clothes designer, Servier, sounds like dinner to me, Pfizer, Eli Lilly, Jazz Pharmaceutical, Allergan, and Wyeth. Wow. Super Nutrient Corporation was not among those who contributed to this study. They came up with uh, uh, two methods of treatment, uh, which can be included one with the other. Uh, specific recommendations, heated pool treatment. Uh, that's really novel. Uh, Exercise programs, for some, these may include aerobic exercise and strength training. I'd love to see somebody pressing 200 pounds with fibromyalgia. <coughs> for certain patients with MS and cognitive behavioral therapy, we have to teach them to behave. And based on the age of the patient, relaxation, rehabilitation, physiotherapy, psychological support and other modalities may be indicated. Now, the pharmacological is a whole list of drugs. Trimadols are recommended for management of pain, and it goes into a whole bunch, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with if you have fibromyalgia. They're going to have another meeting in five years to update all this powerful information that they have. So, when I look at this and I look at why these eminent doctors have such a problem, it comes back to the tools of diagnosis that they use. They're stuck with state-of-the-art. When we used advanced energy diagnosis, we, we made a breakthrough that has never been equaled by any of these people. They uh, are... Uh, uh, don't know which tissues a virus is in. They don't know without doing a, uh, extensive blood studies, what deficiencies are present. And it takes them sometimes a month to get these back. We can do this in minutes. 
we found that fibromyalgia has one solid based core, and that is protein deficiency. Protein deficiency is not found by ordinary tests, and that's why doctors pass it over on every medical exam you have. Uh, they look at the total protein of the blood, and the total protein of the blood doesn't tell the story, because the blood lies. The body will do anything to keep the plasma proteins at a certain level, because you'll either shrivel up or blow up like a balloon if they go off and you're in the hospital. So then they start looking harder sometimes. Uh, fibromyalgia uh, has been found to be a condition where the, uh, where the open door is the protein and your immune system goes in the tank, uh, your hormones go off because all the body enzymes that control all of the uh, functions of DNA, RNA, chromosome, metabolism are necessary. The essential amino acids have to be there, usually 40 to 60% of any enzyme is essential amino acids and uh, they haven't even got the essential amino acids straight yet so when you go into depression uh, depression is one of the symptoms of protein deficiency uh, when you go into strange pains now we found, with our advanced methods we found some things that are constant also that are never reported in these uh, scientific papers one of those is DDD, degenerative disc disease. And you can't find that with a CAT scan, an MRI, or a thermogram uh, before, before it breaks out into a herniated disc. You can see a bulging disc. And when I started doing the original uh, CAT scan studies back in Connecticut in the 1980s, we had to tell our radiologist who, that we wanted bulging discs reported to us. Uh, otherwise, we'd have to go look at the films ourselves, which was not necessary. So, if you could picture 25 different uh, uh, levels of pain coming from degenerating discs, because these discs are found throughout the whole spine, and a brain trying to sort waves of pain coming from 26 different levels that's not supposed to be there, uh, that is one of the basis that we think of brain fog. Now, we have rolling pains that people report in fibromyalgia. Well, one of the things that we found is that the lymphatic system is infected and inflamed, and it's called lymphadenitis. And that is one of our criteria, besides the IV disc, that separates most people from having pre-fibromyalgia and fibromyalgia. So, if medicine is not even aware of these things, you can figure five years from now they might be saying the same things, unless they get some new information over there. Uh, so we have uh, now uh, thousands of cases that we have successfully uh, been able to help. And we're concentrating on the people that have great difficulty, and there are. And the reasons are uh, things like our friendly American dentist has put in root canals, which are ticking bombs, always infected, and they are never found by the dentist to put them in there. Uh, we found them, we can track them, and one of the clinchers is the hot topic of discussion in this country today is the staph epidemic and our friendly Staphylococcus aureus almost invariably affects these teeth, the tonsils, and guess what? The thyroid. And guess what? There's 20 million people out there rolling around taking hormone replacement therapy. So we'll have to go into these details uh, at a later time, but I wanted to tell you about this fibromyalgia and how it's stuck in the mud and how we at FibromyalgiaCure.com have answers for it.